Okay, this is 2.3, and this is going to be our introduction to techniques. We're going to start off, we'll call it a theorem. So if I have a, so if I have a function that's a constant, it's like y equals c, what does it look like at every point? The slope at every point is zero. Here's our other proof using the definition. So no matter what you input, no matter what you plug in, the output is always C. The output is C. So we get C minus C, which we get dragging this out. So that's zero. The limit of zero is zero. So F prime of X is equal to zero when F of X is equal to C. We're going to prove a whole bunch of other derivatives. And then we're going to show it using the definition. Let's not forget the limit in the front there. And we're going to factor that out. Let's keep going to see if we can find a pattern. So a quick way to multiply out x plus h in case you don't know is Pascal's triangle. First power, the coefficients. We're going to add these up and then go on the diagonal with one. So this goes out, this goes out, diagonal. So there's always two emanating from each number. This is three, this is three, this is one, and this is one. Again, this is x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Coefficients. And then you just got to figure out the powers for the second, the first one's second, and the last one's second. So this is coefficients of and they each have an H in each term. So those are canceling. And now we send h to 0, this goes to 0, this goes to 0, and we get 3x squared. So I think we can see a pattern. This actually works for any real number. So that last one that we just did, so 3 comes in the front, and then you subtract 1. That's what we just got. This is 2x to the 1 power, 2x, and that's what we got. So let's do some examples. Okay, if you haven't been doing this while watching the videos, it's a good time to pause now, work these all out, and then push play to see me work them out and if see if you've got the right answer. So first we want to write this as a power. It's a half power. Y prime. Half goes in the front and then it's a half minus one. And one half minus one is minus one half. And this one we had in the last video using the definition. This one we can just compute. That's saying, remember the notation, the derivative of t to the 5 thirds with respect to t. It's like dy dt. This is my y. That's my y. So it's just 5 thirds. That's minus 3 over 3, 2 thirds. This one, we might want to write it as a negative exponent. So we can follow the power rule, write it as a power. Negative 5 in the front. 
Okay, so again, I did this on purpose too. Look at all the different notations of asking for the derivative. So this one, this theorem says, if f and g are differentiable at x, then their sum is differentiable at x. That's what f plus g is. And we can write this out, the derivative, a little bit more fancy, of f of x plus g of x is basically the, the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. And we don't really need to prove this because we know the definition of this comes from limits, and we already know the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits when each of them are continuous, when that limit exists. So just keep that in mind. We'll be doing that a lot. One more thing about a constant. So this is the constant. Remember, you can factor out a constant from a limit, so since the derivative is a limit, you can factor the constant out of a derivative too. So that looks like the derivative of a constant times a function is a constant times the derivative of the function. So now let's do some examples utilizing these two. So the first one, we just compute it, that's a three. So that three can come out and then take the derivative of x, which the derivative of x, one's the power, it's one times x to the one minus one, three times x to the zero, which is just three. But we did this one already, you can memorize that. The derivative of x, it's one. So you you can, you don't have to write it all out like that. You just come you can do the power rule. It's one, three times one, and then x to the one minus one, but it turns out to be the same thing. So remember the derivative of the constant is zero. You don't have to write that. Minus three x is just minus three. We just did that one right there. And let's clean these other two up. Before I take the derivative, it, it's very helpful to write it as a power. That's one fourth, because it's a fourth root. This is minus one half, since that's in the denominator, it's a negative exponent. So this is one fourth. And again, that's minus zero, which you don't really need. Clean it up. And we can leave it as negative unless I mention not to. If you want to write those exponents as positive. Either one. Okay, what about the second derivative and higher? Okay, so this is our notation for a second derivative, or we can do double ticks, double ticks there. Look at this. I just want to come back here and look at this notation. It's the derivative of the derivative. This is the derivative of y in terms of x. Say, take the derivative of the derivative. Notate, that's the notation. So we do two ticks, we do two ticks. We can do three ticks. So once we get to the fourth derivative, you also have the choice on the third derivative to do this. So we do four, but it has to be in parentheses because without the parentheses, it's gonna look like an exponent. So it's f parenthesis four of x d4 all the way to the nth. Let's do an example. 
Okay, so it's asking us to find the eighth derivative. So I'm going to find 6x to the fifth. Again, I really recommend for you guys to do a lot of problems in the book so that you can get faster at this and your brain doesn't have to think about it so much. 6 times 5 is 30. x to the fourth. 360 times 2, 720. So derivative of a constant is zero. So my eighth derivative is zero also. That's the answer to that one. Okay, one more example, and then we'll be done with this section. I, will, I do want to make a point, though. Even though we have the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives, the derivative of a constant times a function is the derivative of a constant times the derivative of the function. We do not have the derivative of a product is the product of the derivative. That's not true. Even though it's true for limits, it's not true for it's not true for derivatives. So you'll have to watch the next video to see how to take a derivative a derivative of a product. Two variable products, not something like three times seven. <laughs>Okay, so it's asking what points on this function is there a horizontal tangent line? So if you remember what a horizontal tangent line is, if we have a function, a horizontal tangent line would be like right there and right there where your slope is zero. It's horizontal, so the slope is zero, and it's a tangent line. So what we're going to do is we're going to, it's going to be where our derivative that's the slope, is zero. Let's do it. So the derivative, we just take the deri derivative of each term, and we set it equal to zero, and solve. Find the x values. Okay, but it didn't ask where. It said at what points are there horizontal tangents. So basically, and this is cheating, you gotta find it. I guess in a pinch when you don't have time. So basically to find the point on the graph that has a horizontal tangent, now we have to plug in the x value into the function to find the point on the graph. So remember our function is right there. So f, looks like that's five. And this one, just plugging it into here. Looks like I did that, that one. Too easy to plug in. Three minus six. Those are our answers. Okay, great. Thanks for watching.